Yoshitoshi Abe is most well known for his work as the character designer of Serial Experiments Lane. His unique style, mixing the over-exaggerated proportions of anime with a drop of darker realism, has captivated audiences of the medium for many years. While he's known for Lane, Abe worked on quite a few projects in the late 90s and early 2000s. He worked with the creator of Lane on another series called Textnalize, as well as two original doujinshi which would both be adapted into anime, Nie Under 7 and Haibane Renmei. I'll admit that I haven't actually experienced much of Abe's work. Lane has been on my watch list for literal years, and though I've always enjoyed the art I've seen from it, I've just never gotten around to watching it. But I must have watched something of his, right? Elsewise, I wouldn't be making this video. That something is Haibane Renmei. Haibane Renmei started as a doujinshi called The Haibane of Old Home by Abe in 1998, but would be left unfinished as the anime began production. The anime aired in 2002. Not only is the art designed by Yoshitoshi Abe, but he also wrote the entire thing. It is only 13 episodes long, and it is fantastic. I imagine it's relatively obscure to the modern anime fan, but I want to get as many people to watch this show as I can. It is very much worth it, and I hope you'll hear me out. Haibane Renmei is about a group of beings called Haibane. Imagine angels that can't fly. They're born from large cocoons in and around the town of Glee, where they take residence in an abandoned school dormitory called Old Home. They live in harmony with the humans of Glee and must follow strange rules. The entire town is surrounded by a large, magical wall that no one, human or Haibane, can leave or touch. We follow Raka a newly born Haibane who must figure out her place in this world as she grows closer to the other Haibane and humans. The main cast of characters, including Raka, are here. Reki, Raka, Hikari, Nimu, Ku, and Kana. My favorite character is Reki for a lot of reasons, but I love most all of the cast. They're all fantastic. I don't want to give too much away though. I think the setting is best experienced in all of its mystery and wonder, and this video isn't a breakdown of the lore. Haibane Rinmei is special. It's one of those anime or shows in general that as soon as you begin watching it, you can just feel that it radiates this aura of comfort. The setting is so well expressed through almost every part of the anime, from the art to the music to the writing itself. You feel like you're there. I can't explain the sense of longing that I felt while watching this show. I wanted to go there. I wanted to live there, to experience their world. The centerpiece of the show, of course, is the amazing and timeless art by creator Yoshitoshi Abe. Every character's design feels somewhat plain and normal, but in a good and special kind of way? I don't know how to describe that exactly. It just fits them. And the landscapes. Oh man, the landscapes. This is the kind of place that you look at and just feel like you could walk around it all day long. I wish I could go and explore it, honestly. At times, though, the animation can be a little low quality. You have a lot of still frames that go on for a bit too long, and at times some messy action. But overall, it's solid enough that it doesn't detract from the experience. The studio that worked on Haibane Renmei was small and probably had a smaller budget, so this is all understandable. The music by composer Kao Otani is utterly amazing. You may know Otani for his compositions in things such as Outlaw Star, Gundam Wing, and the video game Shadow of the Colossus. The music excellently expresses the setting and helps ease you into the comfortable vibe of the show. As you listen to the music, you get a feeling for what it must be like to be in those places during these moments in time. This extends from the show's most cozy points to its darkest points. The composer definitely knows how to set a tone. I honestly don't think there is a better choice for the job. As I already said, the soundtrack is fantastic. And last, but not least, the story and characters. Again. Not only did Abe create the art design for this show, but he also wrote all of it. Like I said before, I don't want to give away too much. I want you to be able to experience the show yourself without much knowledge going in. 
but I think the plot and the characters are amazing. As I said at the start, the setting is very well thought out. It is equal parts familiar and equal parts unknown. Enough within this world is what we know to be normal, with bits of magic that slowly seep up through the cracks. Abe did an excellent job crafting a setting that, while different from our own world, feels close enough that you could definitely see yourself there. Little items, trinkets, tradition, and rules of the land play a big part in this. We are guided through this foreign land along with our protagonist who, like us, is new to it, and we learn about it along with her. This leads me into the characters. Everyone feels real. All the main cast and even the side characters have their quirks and intricacies, and the show does an excellent job of expressing them to you very quickly and cleverly. I think everyone can find someone that they relate to and can attach themselves to in this show. Of course, as it goes on, it does become more and more focused on a few of the main characters, as it should. But I don't think this detracts from the show at all. The main plot starts kind of vaguely, exploring the setting and our main cast of characters. I'd pretty succinctly say that the beginning of the series leans more towards slice of life. You get to see these characters, the Hibene, explore the strange and fantastical but somewhat normal world that they inhabit. How they operate in this world, the rules that they live by, and the friendships and bonds that they form. I really enjoy the way things are subtly introduced and then brought back later. I always see this as a hallmark of good storytelling, where sometimes innocuous things are reintroduced later with importance. Or not, sometimes things that don't need explaining get explained, and it just helps to color in the details of the world. As it progresses into the second half, it does get a bit darker. It deals with some heavy themes but it manages to approach most of these heavier topics in realistic ways despite the at times fantastical setting. No spoilers, but I am going to discuss some of the heavier topics that the show covers. And if you want to go in completely blind, stop here or skip ahead to this time mark. Like I said, no big spoilers, just a vague discussion of topics and themes that the show covers. Now, the show does cover dark themes such as loss, grief, mental illness, self-harm, depression, and much more. Like I said, it really does so in a very realistic and grounded way in spite of the lightly fantastical nature of the world. Most resolutions feel natural even if they are spurred on by mystical forces or the unknown. Many of the topics covered are shown through subtext and otherwise shrouded in the mystery and lore of the world. Some things can feel pretty apparent, while others can leave you in deep thought and wondering what the true meaning of it is. A few towards the end of the show do throw subtext out the window completely, but still manages to hold up otherwise. This does lead to some of the groundedness disappearing momentarily in the latter half, especially towards the end. However, it doesn't go so far into unreality that it disconnects from the world that we've already established and the overall message and feelings of the show. I think it adds to it, actually. It wouldn't have the character it does without these moments. One of the things that I love the most about Hymene Renmei is that, all throughout it, it feels hopeful. Even during the darkest times, there's a sense of love and hope in this world. The characters all care for each other, they take care of each other and their community, and I think that's something that we could all use right now. This is definitely one of those shows that I could see myself coming back to and watching as a comfort. There's so much about it that just feels lovely. Did I mention that most all of the main cast are women, and they're written eloquently and excellently by Abe? As I said, they all feel real, and there's no fan service or anything silly like that. I found myself just really liking all of these characters, and I feel like even the most unlikable character will grow on you. I hope I've convinced you to go watch Hibene Renme. It's streaming on Funimation right now, and is actually getting a Blu-ray release later this year. I've already pre-ordered it. I'm sure there's other ways you can watch it, but I don't know about those, you know. You know. Yoshitoshi Abe and the rest of the team behind the show created something truly special 
in Hibane Renmei. And I want more people to see that. I hope you watch it, and I hope that the team who worked on it know how special it is. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. If it does well, I might do another video or two on Hibane Renmei, or some of the other works by Abe. I hope you have a good day, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye-bye.